Hey everyone, Wandering Duck here, and we just got back from our May 8th sailing on Royal Caribbean's Oasis of the Seas. A seven night journey taking us from Cape Liberty, New Jersey, stopping in Port Canaveral, Port Nassau, and Perfect Day at Coco Cay, which is Royal Caribbean's exclusive private island in the Bahamas. This boat is roughly 1,200 feet long, boasts seven distinct neighborhoods, 20 restaurants, and a capacity that can nearly double most other boats. This ship is an absolute monster, and we can't wait to tell you all about it. Let's go. So I'm not sure exactly what time the cruise ship pulled into Nassau, but I do know that we got off the boat around 9, 9.30. Now, our excursion wasn't supposed to start until 12.45 in the afternoon, so obviously we had a lot of time until that started. We wanted to take full advantage of the cruise port itself because it was the only uh, culture experience that we were gonna have on the trip, being that the only other stop in the Bahamas was at Royal Caribbean's private island, perfect day at Coco Cay. So that being said, we got off the boat at about 9, 9.30 a.m. after we had gotten some breakfast at the Windjammer, and we decided that we were going to bring the kids into the downtown area and try to do some shopping. Now I will say there is a little bit of a walk from the cruise ship itself. I did hear a lot of people complaining about this. Um, myself and my family are very able-bodied. We didn't have this as an issue at all, but I did hear a lot of older uh, passengers talking about how they didn't even want to get off the boat because of it. Um, now I, I, for me to travel all that way and have a five minute walk stop me from getting off the boat, that's never gonna happen. Um, but for somebody who physically can't do it, they should be aware of how um, much that walk is. I felt like I did see shuttles going back and forth, um, but I'm not sure if they were through the cruise line or through NASA's cruise terminal. So as we got to the end of the pier, uh, the spot where the port lets out into NASA, it does get very congested right there. There is a small marketplace that sees a lot of activity and uh, people tend to flock towards it because it's, it has the stuff that everyone's looking for right in front of your face. Um, we did walk around the marketplace. We bought a couple, couple things, um, but it just felt, again, too crowded. And as it is, uh, the sailing that we were on, from what I understand, was operating at a lower capacity anyway. So, um, you know, some of these Oasis-class ships, if you're on there and you get into Nassau and you don't have an excursion booked, might be difficult, might be a little overwhelming just because there's so many people and everybody's trying to sell you something or ask you for a cab fare, but it is a similar experience if you've been to any other port city before. It's not the same as if you were to fly to Nassau because you don't have this massive influx of people trying to enter the downtown area from one exit. And that pier actually also led to um, all the other cruise ships that were in Nassau that day. I believe the Freedom of the Seas from Royal was there. I believe Carnival's Glory and Dream were also both there. Uh, it's appeared that we were one of the last boats to dock, and maybe that's for a reason, maybe because of the size. But again, we got off the boat about 9.30, brought the kids into the downtown area, felt that we had some time to shop. It did feel a bit of a rushed experience because of the 12.45 excursion, but Anyway, we took the kids into the stores, had them pick out some stuff. I do feel like we were being hustled a little bit um, because, you know, I was counting in my head as they were putting stuff on the table and I do feel like the total amount actually was a lot higher than what I had had put it on the table. So when they told me, I had the kids put some of the stuff back and and I was telling them, I said, it's not a problem. I said, I just don't want to spend this much. As I was doing that, they were taking stuff from behind the counter, putting it on the counter. And I'm like, no, 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 I don't want this. And they're like, no, 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 it's fine. We're going to remove the money from what you just did. Just leave what you still have on the table and we'll give you this stuff as well. <clears throat> you know, take that for what it's worth. I mean, I felt like in the end, like I did all right after they had given me the stuff that they did, but just be travel savvy you know don't be a naive american or a naive traveler in any case I, I would say that goes true for any cruise port any international port anything you should always be wary of am i getting an okay deal am i comfortable with this 
because it's easy to get sucked into the oh I have to have it and you know it's um, this is the only time I'm ever here but a lot of times you walk right out of a shop and you might see the same shirt sitting outside for half of what you just paid for it so just always be travel savvy um, as we were getting onto the street actually before we had gone into the shop I did feel like it was a little too congested in that area and I would maybe have recommended wearing a mask in that spot but again the only time we were actually asked to wear a mask in Nassau was when we entered the actual stores not the marketplace it did feel a little bit irrelevant because everyone right outside the store was not wearing them but we didn't have any problem with it so we masked up and went inside not an issue after we purchased everything that we did in the store we brought the stuff back to the cruise ship because i did not want to bring it on the excursion being that we were on a catamaran um, <clears throat> the whole thing did feel like somewhat of a rushed experience not anything i'm not used to been cruising my whole life but we decided that we were going to all get back on the boat to drop off the stuff so that everybody could use the bathroom freshen up whatever they needed to do grabbed some pizza from Sorrento's and we were back out onto the pier. And now from here, we followed a group at about 1245. We had uh, somebody that was leading us and they walked us in a single file line down the same pier that we had docked with the Oasis on. And we all loaded onto this catamaran boat. It was very, it was closer than Nassau downtown. Let's put it that way. From here, the boat took a 45 minute sailing out, uh, 30, 45 minute sailing out to the coral reef where we were gonna be snorkeling. And during this sailing process, we passed Atlantis. We got to see a lot of different things. The catamaran itself has the nets, as you can see. Uh, the, the kids were able to sit in the nets and they really enjoyed that. It's nice to get the breeze coming from underneath there. Um, now you are sharing this excursion with quite a few other people, but I never felt like the boat was necessarily overcrowded as long as everybody's just kind of seated where they are as the boat's moving. Um, there is a bathroom on board. It's a typical bathroom that you would experience on a smaller vessel um, where it has a pump style toilet, but um, we found this to be absolutely essential. Uh, just being in a party of five and having kids with us, like we did not want to be out on a boat for four hours with no bathroom. Um, uh, once we arrived out to the spot where we were going to snorkel, the crew who were very friendly, very great, uh, they passed out all the gear. We had actually had some stuff with us. So um, me and Kristen's snorkel gear was stuff we had brought from home and the kids were able to to get it if they wanted it and um and then they proceeded to give us a safety briefing explained to us um that you know buddy system and explain hand signals like different things that you do to signify to the person on the boat that you're okay or everything's not okay pretty much from what i got this means you're all good pretty much any chaotic flailing of the arms obviously is going to tell anyone on the crew that you're in trouble or in distress or anything. Now, I never felt like our safety was a concern whatsoever on this excursion. Um, I felt like the crew and, and staff on the boat took very good care of us. Um, they, gave, they told us everything that we needed to do, instructed us on how to wear the life jackets, told us that we could pump them up as we wanted. Everyone needs to wear one though. And that's an important thing to remember. Now, the life jacket itself only inflates there's a small nozzle on it that you depress, and as you push in, you can blow air into it. Something I found as I'm snorkeling, I don't usually wear a vest when I'm snorkeling, and I like to dive down and get better pictures of fish and just kind of have a little bit more of a free feeling. The instructor had told me that I could release air out of the vest as I was in the water, but being that the vest wants to be around your neck and the air actually fills around your neck, I found that while I was in the, in the water with the snorkel and mask on, it was difficult to deflate the vest all the way, so it was harder to dip down. Maybe something to think about, maybe don't fill it with air, try it first, go in the water, dive down. And if you feel uncomfortable, put some air back in it. I was able to come right back up to the surface um, even though it wouldn't let me all the way down and fill the vest while I was out snorkeling in the water. Now, while we were 
at this point. The, the boat sits on top of a coral reef and they allow us to get out and snorkel and for about 40, half hour, 40 minutes. And um, he explains to you what you might see on the reef and, and where to go and where not to go. Uh, again, felt very safe. There was uh, quite a few fish out where we are. Um, in comparison to other parts in the Caribbean, I would say it's not as good snorkeling. But then again, you know, I'm talking about places like St. Thomas where, the, you know, you're not just seeing fish, you're seeing sea turtles and stuff. We didn't really see any of that. Um, largest fish probably saw was maybe six, seven inches, um, uh, big plate style fish. I'm not sure exactly what the kind of fish is, but um, we felt like there was plenty to see while we were there. And they also allowed us to jump off of the boat into the water if we wanted to. And upon returning, you walk up this lovely staircase to get back onto the boat. Once everybody's back on board, they do a head count, make sure everybody's on board, make sure everything's good, everybody's feeling good. They start pouring drinks, which, the, by the way, they will not allow you to have until after you snorkel. Probably a good idea. Once we were back on board, uh, every they did roll call and they were getting ready to shove off and this gentleman pulled up in a small, maybe, 10 15 foot boat and the whole bottom of the boat was filled with just coconuts and he was selling these to anybody who wanted to purchase one um, for to just drink the actual coconut water itself or the i believe the rum came from the boat uh, it seemed like a collaborated effort and it just felt very um, authentic where you know you're you're drinking right out of the coconut and you know they had some ice right there we poured some rum in it it was fantastic obviously just me and Kristen the kids did also enjoy their coconuts that just had regular coconut water in it um, we felt like that was a really cool little thing that happened um, the guy was very personable he was very funny and you know when all is said and done he took off to the next boat so we were able to enjoy our drinks from real coconuts on the way back to Nassau to go back to the cruise ship uh, I felt like on the way back, we had probably an even better ride um, just because the sky was clearing up. We saw a lot of mixed clouds during this week, but um, something to remember is when you're in the Caribbean, uh, if it's raining, wait five minutes. You know, it's uh, typically rain comes and goes. It's not usually an issue, um, you know, and uh, we didn't experience any of it actually when we were doing the actual snorkeling or on the way back. But the skies were much better. The view was fantastic. We got to go past Atlantis. We saw all these different things and the cost was not that heavy. That's one of the most important parts about this reservation or excursion for me is the fact that there are excursions out there. Like we saw stuff for Nassau where it was saying that it was gonna be $225 a person to bring people to Atlantis. Now. Uh, for some people, you know, this might be the only time they ever get to Atlantis and like they might feel that that value is there. But for me, I just completely can't see the value in spending, you know, for a party of five, $1,250 plus tax or whatever else gets added on. Um, you know, you're, you're a good way into another cruise at that point. And um, if I'm going to go to Atlantis, I'm going to go to Atlantis. I'm not going to do it um, on a time frame where I could get left behind. That being said, um, I felt like that was also a, a big thing when we were in Orlando, the Port Canaveral, that people were doing Disney as a shuttle service. And uh, I just need everyone to remember that um, sometimes things sound better than they actually are. You know, from what I was aware of, the when we were in Orlando, uh, the Disney... Uh, there's a Disney excursion where Royal Caribbean offers you shuttle service one hour to Orlando and we didn't get to Orlando until noon. So the people who are doing Disney as an excursion took a one hour bus ride from Port Canaveral, arrived at Disney at 1 p.m., paid the full price ticket for the whole day and we were only staying there till eight. Now, I don't know about anybody else, but I am not comfortable even pushing the time to get back on a cruise ship. As I said before, I do not want to be a peer runner. Nobody does. And that's why you shouldn't push it. You should always plan accordingly, try to front load your excursions so you have plenty of time in case something were to happen. But um, yeah, that being said, 12 o'clock arrival, one, one hour ride to Disney, 
you have the hour ride back, you know, and with the lines, uh, you know, in the middle of the day at Disney, it's hard to think that you'd be able to go on many rides in that amount of time. So same, same kind of, same kind of concept with Atlantis, you know, for $250 per person, you know, I, I would want to maximize my ability to use that. I would want to do that while I'm staying in the actual hotel. Um, it is a beautiful destination. I talked to some people who did go to Atlantis and they had an absolute blast and I'm sure, you know, and that's, that's how it should be. But, um, for us, this, this excursion made the most sense because it was roughly 34, $35 a person. And, um, you know, for five people, that's, that's not bad. All things considered getting out on a catamaran and beautiful Bahamas and, and just, um, we, we felt like that was, that was our best option. So in conclusion, I would say this is a really good shore excursion. Um, I think it's good for all ages. I think the value is there, um, which is a huge part of booking a shore excursion because people are already into this cruise trip for X amount of dollars. And, you know, to be shelling out hundreds of, hundreds of dollars for a shore excursion, uh, it can start to add up really quickly, especially if you have a larger party. And for the cost of what this is, I felt like we got a lot of value out of it. Um, I was skeptical about the excursion being booked at 1245 and kind of like cutting our day in half, but it actually ended up working out well. Um, you know, a little bit of research goes a long way, but I can't urge enough that when you book shore excursions to just keep an open mind, you know, happiness is reality minus expectations. And if you have it built to be this picturesque thing and it needs to be perfect, you're gonna be the person that ruins it for yourself. So just keep an open mind, have fun, um, you know, let loose a little bit and just, you know, let the, let the tour guides do what they do and, and give you the experience that, that you want. But a lot of it is what you're able to put into it and, and allowing yourself to experience. You know, if you nitpick and you're like, well, it's an overcast day and that, and that's shot, it's the Caribbean, wait five minutes, the rain will pass. You know, we saw some clouds on our way out on the excursion and as soon as we got out there we had big sky sun so you never know what will happen um but i i would absolutely recommend this this excursion to uh, anybody that's that's looking at it um you know i've i've spent a lot of time on cruise ships a lot of tra time traveling in my life and uh is there better snorkeling elsewhere in the world absolutely but um for a port that's out of bahamas uh I think the values there, the snorkeling's not bad. There's fish there, um, which is a huge part of it. I've been to islands where there's, uh, you go snorkeling and you don't see anything. So um, I would say this is a great excursion, especially for first time cruisers. We will also be releasing information and videos on our trip to St. Thomas that we took back in October. Uh, we currently have a member of Wandering Duck driving up from Bar Harbor, Maine, up to uh, Canada, stopping in places like uh, Halifax and Peggy Island, uh, doing the Fundy Coastal Drive. He's uh, doing the drive in his uh, Porsche 911S, and uh, we'll have footage from that. We're going to be going to North Carolina in July, and also Martha's Vineyard in July and August. Uh, Wandering Duck will be traveling to New York City in October to attend New York Comic Con. And we're currently trying to book uh, another cruise with Royal Caribbean sometime early in the next year. Um, our other member of Wandering Duck is also going to be doing some international travel. I know he's heading to Singapore next year. Um, and they constantly travel so uh, we'll be adding in YouTube shorts on that and can answer any questions that you have on that he also has a lot of um, backlogged content that I haven't done yet uh, numerous uh, European trips Liechtenstein Switzerland lots of other places lots of other places so there's a lot more content to come so stay tuned and uh, have a good day